Hi everybody, welcome back to a new surprise last minute squat cast. Um, so Games Workshop have announced the new Voltan Hearthkin squad, which is looks like it's gonna be the basic warrior squad and set of sprues. So let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at how it ties in with what else we know about the Voltan. And also let's have a look how it pulls some references from some slightly older ranges. <laughs> Yes, so the uh, new Hearthkin squad has been announced and there's an article about it on Warhammer Community where they just go through the options in the, uh, presumably, the box. We don't actually know that yet, but I assume this is the contents of a 10 squat box. And, uh, and then show us all the weapons and all the stuff and give us a little bit more information on the background and the world. So let's have a look at this. Here we go. The mighty Hearthkin are the core of the Leagues of Voltan's armies, and here they are. After many millennia of isolation, the Leagues of Voltan are returning to the galactic stage, ready to dirty their hands, protect the holds, and defend their way of life. When we first announced the return of this ancient faction, we showed off a single Hearthkin warrior. Hearthkin warrior? Hearthkin warrior. Well, now here's a whole squad, and here they are. There we go. So these are what we assume are the basic troops. And um, yeah, there's some interesting things here. Um, many people said the original basic troop was a bit boring. Um, he had like, uh, you know, uh, dodgy alt right hair um, and, uh, and no other markings. So it's quite nice to see them with a bit more personality, isn't it? So you've got your basic uh, squats here. They're um, not squats, of course. Squats are only the Necromunda ones. These are the original kin squats. Um, these guys have uh, what looks like a, um, uh, what's that, like some sort of plasma gun, uh, pulse ion, ion gun, let's say what an ion gun, because we know they use ion weapons, uh, and their curvy armour, their weird little bumpy backpack, and um, yeah, we've got a sergeant, and he's got what looks like a plasma pistol, and a power sword, interesting thing, for your uh, squats to put on the front page. Um, so yeah, interesting things here, let's go through the next few. Uh, so we've got a comm guy with his gun, and you can see how here, how both the robot guys, the Ironkin, because they're the same size, uh, and you can see he's got like little metal legs there. Um, and the normal guys uh, look, you know, that domed thing is relatively common. Um, we'll get to that in a second. And then there's a few more here. So we've got some nice, a bit of representation taste in it, a bit of representation, sorry, here. Um, you know, nice to know that the kin aren't all the same colour. That's nice. And uh, there's the visor down, you can just see in there. Uh, visors, of course, big old squat thing. And uh, then we've got some female kin, uh, which is nice, some women. Um, and then there's some few things here to point out. Uh, I like the segmented armour here. Uh, like the sort of, like, leather belts they're all wearing over their super high-tech armour. It gives them a very, like, prospector, minor look. Um, power knife again uh and i like the sort of some of them have got their regular backpack with then some like cloth packs added to it which is nice look it gives them a very human feel right this like leather work and cloth backpacks she's got a little hammer attached there to the side of her backpack it gives them a bit of a practical human they're high they've got high tech stuff but they're not all high tech they still have you know clothes um <laughs> And then finally, this guy here with his uh, handlebar moustache and his um, jeans stealer goggles on. Some sort of awe specsy guy, maybe? Um, he looks like... I like his... He looks like he's doing something in cyberspace, like he's hacking or something. And there's our original... Uh, the Votan they originally showed. So I have to assume that this is the guns, the standard gun. So a few things to talk about with the models here before we keep on going through the article. Um, first of all, the weapons. As we said, yeah, they are very... Van Saar, aren't they? Um, you know, this sort of like, you know, uh, they're Imperial weapons, but they look a bit more compact and um, b like bulky in a sort of slick, uh, futuristic way. And I uh, generally high tech. I like how even putting these side to side, uh, these sort of things and these sort of things, um, the Van Saar ones look, still look like they've been Imperium Gothicized. Uh, there's some stuff here that's just a little bit weird and fiddly, uh, which you don't get on the Hearthkin, who have, you know, gone for their basic, solid, you know, will no, no silly gothic details on them, no skulls everywhere. Jeez, I hadn't realised that. There's no skulls anywhere. Um, 
so I like that. I like that, that you know that that connection to dark age technology that the and dark age STC technology that the Vansar have uh, threads through here it makes sense. Um, we've also got some uh, links here. I like the thing with the helmets. Here's a helmet guy. Some links here to the squat prospectors. So if you didn't know, if you need to catch up, the idea is that squat the squat prospectors. These are the neck newly released. They're, they're on pre-order now. Necromunda squat prospectors. The idea is that squats. Our, our kin, Votan, who um, went to Imperial planets to help build, rebuild the Imperium after the Horus Heresy or any time since, and have since stayed on the planets and um, become their own like subgroups. So they might not have much contact with the original kin, um, and Squat is the sort of name the Imperials use for them. Um, but, uh, and the way that the Necromunda guys have been designed, it looks like they've got Necromunda standard weapons um, and things that are also in other Necromunda models, like the little mining searchlights and these um, ziggity zaggity uh, suits uh, that Carajon have as well. But um, but you can see the link here, that, that, that what they're building is still kind of inspired by, by Votan stuff. So, so here's our kin and here's our Necromunda ones. And yeah. There's, there's a, that's well designed, I'd say. Like that looks like a, a sensible, uh, you know, technological evolution or devolution of design. There, um, obviously, I think the little bubble helmets that painted bright yellow are better. And my, uh, if I when I get kin, uh, they're definitely going to have them. Um, but obviously, there's a few other links here that, are, yeah, a few other links that I should probably talk about before I get to that model. I'm going to talk about their um, design similarity to the Iron Kin. So we go into this a bit next. Uh, these hardy clone warriors are from the core of the Kin hosts, and unlike the Adeptus Astartes, they are not bred solely for war. These soldiers are citizens drawn from the populace of the holds, regardless of gender, job, or social role. They're kin who've undergone rigorous martial training, yes, but they also have fulfilling lives outside of war. Hearthkin, which is unlike everybody in the Imperium. The Hearthkin warriors are often engineered with particular clone skeins that allow them to specialise in combat. Which is interesting, right? If they've got other jobs, or do you just put a clone skein on and take it off? I'm not sure. Heightened senses improve stamina and the ability to see better in the dark, to name a few. In contrast, others augment their bodies for battle with mechanical limbs and synthetic organs. So it looks like they can change jobs, but maybe not that much if they're chopping up limbs. Yeah, who knows? Held in equal status in League society, Iron Kin also fight shoulder to shoulder with their flesh and blood comrades. Kin are kin even in war. Yeah, robot helpers. So. This guy here is an Iron Kin, and I like the way they basically are, you know, the squats have made themselves some robot squats. They're the same size, uh, it looks like, they're the same shape, they have the same number of limbs, they're just a bit more mechanical. And they've got their little heads. Um, we saw one of these earlier. This was, a sl as you look at it now, a slightly bigger model, um, who obviously is there to respray those trikes. Um, uh, which I like. Uh, he has a head similar to other old Imperial robots like the Catafron or UR025, who's the Man of Iron. Uh, a few people have mentioned that these would be Men of Iron. I don't think that's the case. I think it's probably more likely that the Squats had good working, maybe limited AI. And then the Imperium went crazy because they don't know when to stop and crazily ended up killing themselves with Man of Iron. Sorry, not the Imperium, the other humans in the planet, in the galaxy. So we know they have these iron guys, um, and we know they're in the squat box, and we know they're about the same size, and they look like that looks like it's carrying some sort of las blaster. Um, so I would be interested to know how these are integrated. It might be the case that this is a dual box, like they always do, and you get you can either have a squad of guys or a, a squad of robots. Um, it might be that you can put one or two robots in your squad as support, but I, to be honest, I prefer it if it was more integrated than that, like like either that it didn't matter, or you you can have 50-50, or like you, you give an upgrade to your squad that makes them robot-y. Um, any of those are possible. Um, there's a bit of a close-up here, but most of these things we've talked about, a lot of them seem to be um, playing a VR motorbike game. Yeah, yeah, fine, they can do that. Um, we get down here, each of the Hearthkin units numbers, each unit of Hearthkin numbers 10 to 20 strong is led by an experienced Thane. These doughty squad leaders have the honour and responsibility of commanding their fellow kin and are able to arm themselves with a variety of hand tank combat weapons, including brutal concussion gauntlets and vicious plasma axes. Oh, they're not power weapons, they're plasma weapons. Um, cool, I am glad to see an axe. I'm also glad to see this little, like, unit marker dwarfy longship viking thing. 
uh, and the markings on the gun there, which we were worried, you know, might be a bit missing. Um, I also like, I'm also liking the hair choices here. They haven't all just got big fantasy dwarf beards. Um, and that's something that the old squats had too. Um, this is the guild master, the old guild master um, uh, with his like um, biker moustache. Um, so I like that there's going to be a few different things here. Oh, we've got a freak preview. Look, I'm going to talk about these anyway. There's one big thing that all these guys are reminding me of, and that is Hassle Free's Grim. I think I think it's the blockiness of the weapons. This is Hassle Free miniatures make a huge range of models, lovely models, not that expensive either. All in metal, single piece usually. I think I think they started to do some resin recently. Um, and the Grim are their space dwarves. I've reviewed them in my old squat model review. Um, they're, they're, they have the stature of space halflings, but they have this clean sci-fi look. Uh, they have male and female members, and they have these little lines down the guns, these blocky sort of guns. That's what I'm getting. Those are the vibes I'm getting here. This is another one, uh, a bit you know, beautifully painted there. Um, but I was, I did see them and think, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, big square guns. Uh, I don't know why that looks so dwarfish. I don't know why everyone doing space dwarves has thought of those. But yeah, anyway, this is what I've been accidentally clicking on or video is these guys. Um, you can check them out. They're, they're really lovely little models to paint. Um, if I was doing a squat prospector gang, they would be perfect juves. Uh, I haven't actually read the book. I don't know if they have juves, but you know what I mean. Um, anyway, so back to the start. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite glad with this. I quite like it. I like that it's got a bit more character than when we first saw one of these guys. Um, and, and yeah, let's go a bit further. Thens communicate with their squads through the aid of cybernetic implants, relaying strategic instructions from the commanders of their oath bound to their units. Commanders of the oath band, which is presumably their, their skirmish scale army for a game of Warhammer 40k, who carry specialized heavy weaponry such as L7 missile launchers. Oh, we're really gonna go with the acronym thing here, aren't we? Uh, Etacon plasma beamers and magna rail rifles. So this is a combination of Games Workshop's um, trademarkable names and uh, the comedy acronyms they were going to go for. These units work effortlessly in conjunction with one another regardless of their specialization. Some are tasked with sundering the defenses of heavily armed opponents with ion blasters and high las auto rifles. That's what the robot had. While others capture battlefield objectives and lay down hail saturated fire with their autark pattern bolters. Um, the Leagues of Otan believe nothing is worth doing unless it's done very well, just like all the other dwarf archetypes, and they wage war as methodically as any other pursuit. If the cost of the fight cannot be justified, they'll retire from battle, so their carriage run too. Great. In good order, every commander from Thanes to the Grand Leader and Oath Band will ensure no kin lives are wasted in the pursuit of victory. To help limit unnecessary loss of life, squads of Hearthkin often go to battle with experienced field medics or skilled engineers for Ironkin, which is another implication that they're different squads? because otherwise you'd have to have one of each following the squad around. Uh, who can tend to any injuries, being they mechanical or meat. No king gets left behind. Uh, they've got plenty more to say, but a direct command from the ancestors means they have to finish here. Um, well, I don't, um, but I haven't got much more to say. I've sort of said it all now. Uh, yeah, I like them. I think this update gives us the flexibility we were looking for. Uh, that looks a lot like a Tau rail rifle, doesn't it? Um, a yeah, I don't know what that is. A high las auto? No, it's not one of those. Ion blaster? It's not an ion blaster. That's it's a grav weapon. That's a plasma gun, isn't it? That's a plasma gun. Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, that's my squat cast update for you. Uh, we've got a little bit more info. Um, we've got a few clues as to how the robot guys might fit in, and we've got basically a lot more flexible and characterful squad. I'd be interested to see if things like the um. The dwarf touches can be ramped up if you want, or if there's if there's like a veteran squad that are extra dwarfy that have a bit more of the sort of Viking, Rooney, Norse, Germanic stuff on it. Um, but I'm liking the line they're treading between high tech, sensible, uh, which is a you know rare thing in 40k. High tech, sensible, a bit prospectory and sort of handmade and you know explorery and practical and also uh, the odd dwarf inspiration thing. Um, these certainly look a lot more 40k than I think we were suspecting they might. And um, yeah, I just, I mean, I'm waiting for the sort of dark underbelly to hit. Uh, not sure what that is yet. I'm sure it'll be revealed. But at the moment, they look like um, what we were talking about with the, um, 
in my what to do about the Imperium video that, you know, it's a good way to introduce a human faction who aren't absolutely awful. So, um, yeah, well done. I've enjoyed that. Um, so if you're uh, looking at doing some squats, yeah, let me know. I'm, I'm certainly looking at doing some. I've got my prospectors on order. I think I might send them off to Bobby first so that she can do a on the sprue review for her channel. Um, I don't know when I'll get around to painting them. I am, I reckon what I'm probably going to be doing is getting a load of prospectors, a load of hot, uh, these kin guys, and probably some Caradron and smushing them all together to make a fun army. That's almost certainly the plan, but we will see. Um, great, thanks for watching. That's your weekly squat cast. Normal broadcasting will resume with uh, probably just a load of heresy content tomorrow. Thanks very much.